What's up, guys? We're Cheers to Embers, and you're watching us on GoHotShark.com. Top songs um, for me right now. It's probably a little boring for most people. I'm uh, I'm, I'm digging the new Breaking Benjamin song, Failure, um, off their upcoming uh, Dark Before Dawn album, and uh, the new Red album. A Beauty and Rage, pretty much the whole album. It's it's not left my CD player since I got it. I've been listening to the new Contortionist album, the new Periphery album, and a whole lot of Carnival. Carnival? What is Carnival? That music. Uh, 30 Seconds to Mars. That's a good band, man. I, man, Jared Leto is inspiring. See, I, a lot of Bring Me the Horizon. Oh really? Yeah, that's one. Of, that's one of the ones I've been listening to lately. Really? Yeah. That's cool. uh, Frank got me in periphery too. I've been listening to that. Nice. <laughs> uh, Chevelle, also good. Uh, Red's new stuff, of course. And uh, we just opened for Red um, recently, so big, big I like a huge, huge Red kick right now. I was before, but like you know, even more so now. So, uh, Three Days Grace has got a new, a new CD. Uh, oh, yeah. I, uh, I really, <clears throat> I really am looking forward to it, actually. Um, but the, the, I like their new, they've got three singles out and every one of them good. Yeah. But, I'm psyched um, about it. I keep looking for it on the store shelf, but it's not there yet. And then, <laughs> uh, then I'm, uh, John Mayer and Ben Rector are my other, other ones. Oh, wait, and, uh, Ben Howard. Look at, uh, Black Flies with Ben Howard. It's great, like, be like acoustic folk music. Good. Uh, I've been listening to a lot of uh, Bring Me the Horizon 2, uh, of Monsters and Men. I'm really big into like a lot of folky indie sounding pop music too. Uh, I don't listen. I go on, I go on rock kicks, man, but it's not. Like I don't listen to rock like continuously. I don't that's this is, though. That's, this that's is my like, biggest dose of rock has been here. <laughs> like, inspirationally though, it's. I mean, uh, well, you, creatively, it's good that we have so many different influences. Yeah, I'm, I'm, that let me look. Style, I, you know, that you, I know you've been listening to uh, Deftones a lot. Oh yeah, I just now That's started usual. listening. Yeah, as <laughs> I just now started listening to their last album because I, I started listening to them and di I stopped listening to them after Diamond Eyes, and then they had another one come out, and I just never, you know, you lose touch with the band after. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's freaking amazing. It happens. Oh, Slipknot. Oh yeah, that's always, always can't leave them off. Um, yeah, I've pretty much always listened to this type of music. Um, I listen to other. Other stuff, just a little bit, but mostly I, it's rock and metal and stuff like that. Um, I, I guess I've been listening to it as long as I can remember since I was in fourth or fifth grade. Uh, no. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> no, that was I, no, 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 I didn't. <laughs> Not embarrassingly enough, no. That's not embarrassing. That's no, not embarrassing it's embarrassing all. knowing what I listen to <laughs> other than rock music. You've got nothing on like, me, I can promise you. Are you, you sure about this? I remember when I was six and I rocked out Will Smith. Alright. That's, that's, that's not Will that Smith. bad. He rapped Tappy. <laughs> <laughs> he rapped Tappy. No, he was mad at his parents. <laughs> but other than that, my dad would like listen to like Van Halen and I didn't See, that's get awesome, in. Well, yeah, I, that's still love, I still yeah. love classic rock and stuff. Well, I didn't I didn't like get into them big until I started playing guitar and I was like, oh yeah, dad, he had a, he had a good thing going there. <laughs> like, and then I mom got to was, Van Halen. Mom was much different than that. My parents, oh, the music that I was uh, kind of subjected to when I was younger, um, my mom was a pop fiend, you know. Uh, Madonna, <laughs> Paula Abdul, and, and all this stuff. My dad, he was a huge country fanatic. And I, I liked all of it. I, I really did, <laughs> genuinely. <laughs> When I was in, I think, middle school, um, my best friend let me hear some Metallica, and I was like, wow, this is this is awesome. After that, it was just like, you know, a Rolling Stone, man. I just kept, like, picking up stuff as I went, and uh, eventually hooked on to, you know, bands like Linkin Park and, and Breaking Benjamin. So it's been a really odd musical journey for me. We had a contest at uh, one of my elementary schools that I attended. Me and a couple of other guys did uh, did an air band <laughs> type deal, and uh, I mean they were <clears throat> they were little blow up guitars, <laughs> and, and I didn't have any have anything except for a seat and a table and two pencils. But I played drums. What pulled me into music? I was kind of kind of made to do something, not because I didn't want to do it, but because like I needed a credit, and uh, I think my cousin was doing it. And I thought, all right, well, I mean, it can't be that hard. You know, so I joined band, and I was a drummer. And so from there, it just kind of, you know, it went from there, and it grew. 
and uh, I got pulled in a lot farther. Yes, it was a huge part of my childhood. When I was little, I would like there's videos of me like picking up sticks and acting like I was playing guitar, and I would bang know. them and give me instruments all the time. And I never wanted to actually yeah. sit down and learn. That I would just want to like bang around on them. But yeah. I got very interesting. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? It's a game. <laughs> He's born or is porn? That does about sound like the music that you Okay, played. yeah. It was not a big part of my life. It was around, but Xbox was my paramore. <laughs> <laughs> Next. I think I started playing guitar in about eighth, seventh or eighth grade, something like that. And uh, it just kind of inclined from there, but I had an Eagle CD. I loved that thing, you know. Uh, yeah. Hell Freezes Over. That was one of the first CDs I remember owning. I love that CD. Yeah, I just kind of went from there. That game, dude. It's actually been really, really good, man. Like, um, we started a long time ago. <laughs> me, uh, Matt, and Mike are old guitarists. And, and we kind of felt like we were like the three pillars and we couldn't find anyone else that, that could, you know, perform the way we wanted or, or would create, you know, how, how we created, um, until we uh, picked Frank up. And oddly enough, we got Frank through meeting Brent and Keith. And uh, they were they were in a separate band at the time. Yeah. And so, like, you know, it's, it's, it's interesting to know that um, we're all on the same, on the same page, I think, uh, musically and creatively. I think right. the setbacks sucked, obviously, you know, we were rolling yeah. pretty good, and you know, and me and me and Keith can't just. <laughs> no, down, I mean, man. obviously, you know, I'll, you've got to retool you things. When yeah, you, you, do. you do. And that that was the good thing, though. It was about being able to do. I was that. at that the Mike Frank booth. Remember whenever we were trying to find a drummer? Oh and man. You told them about. Uh, you told them. And about I was like, Oh my god! Why don't we do that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it, it kind that of was before Nick. You know. Yeah, it's been a lot of fun. I don't know. I, I kind of like playing songs that are kind of already made, you know. And I, I, I like writing songs too. But there's a, you know, there's a certain element of fun to uh, taking songs that are already down and recorded and everything, and kind of putting your own take and spin on. Them. We're better than our old band. <laughs> I think the band's consistent live, and I love it. And and the environment's really nice. Uh, it's not a hostile environment. We kind of got you ever. We have little, we have brother relationships as yeah. far as that goes. You know, me and Matt are obviously brothers, so we, you know, we get under each other's skin sometimes. And these guys, they're basically brothers, so they get under each other's skin. But it's yeah. not at all like hostile. I but I think I butt heads with everybody, but Frank is because Frank's like, what don't even. <laughs> He's like, don't. Um, I have my opinions. Don't. <laughs> don't even. The worst part. I can't even. The worst part. The worst part about being new to the band, I think. Is getting over that vibe. I don't even if they don't, even if like the rest of it don't feel. I think Keith the, like knows what I'm talking about. It's like it's Terry Nimbers and Brent and Keith. And it's gonna <laughs> feel like that for a while. It, and you can't and you can't really. Get I that think feeling. I think we're starting. You know, we've been in it for a year now, but I mm -hmm. think now that we've got to a groove, mm -hmm. I think it feels more of a cohesion. That's the thing. only bad thing. Is in the worst. So that's the only bad thing I can really point out. Yeah, it's I mean, not a negative it's thing. It's not either. really a negative. It's, thing. it's, it's kind of almost just a this thing that you got to get through. But uh, yeah, yeah, and you know, we've seen lots of members come and go, and so it, it always kind of felt like the other members, you know, didn't really. <laughs> it's Frank Shu, okay. Uh, it always kind of felt like you know the other members were the other members, and we were Tears to Embers, and and you know, so it was hard to it was it was hard to find people that actually uh, just um, just fit Thank you. in the uh, in the situation, and. So again, you know, inside looking out, I see how these guys feel about you know feeling like they're not necessarily immediately a part of the group as much as they are you know the new guys that that just joined and are trying to adhere to <laughs> you know. Now, do you know also too? I think when we, we started doing things uh, like we started at, when we start adding like we we started building stage shows and started doing videos and that made it more like okay this yeah. is new this isn't something that was going on before us exactly so it, and it, we all kind of got to throw our ideas in so it was it was you know mm -hmm. um, a creature of all of our creation yeah Gary Neighbors you know, still feels like it's just getting started in a way yeah so yeah. You know what I mean? definitely for the better I mean it was a blow um, 
losing Mike, you know, because he's been with us since the beginning. Um, that, like Frank said before, it was it was kind of a setback, but it was it was an impassable setback. It was going to oh, happen was... at some point or another anyway. So <laughs> the band has grown um, for the better. I think we're we're doing a lot more now than than we were before. You know, to to try and you know reach this professional plateau <laughs> and. You can't see what we're doing on camera, but I'm gonna just go ahead and look. <laughs> I can't get it on. <laughs> the band is the band is definitely changed for the better. Well, it's been interesting. I mean, we've had a lot of a lot of lineup changes between. <laughs> I mean, it's been almost a little frustrating at times because, like, I mean, where we're where we are, where we look, where we're located. Even the musicians that are here are just different than us. We're definitely geographically challenged. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You know, the, it's either they're either really, here's the, really, really heavy, it's, or it's really easy, soft. It's so. easily country or metal yeah. or metal. That's the good thing about us, though, is we're kind of on the fence between yeah. mainstream rock and metal. Yeah, yeah really. Yeah. And, and, and all of us have that shows. same mindset about it too. It's not like anybody here feels out of place playing the type of music that we play, you know. That was another thing yeah. with the band. That was, the, with, the, 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 with our band, it was like guys had a band that didn't like what we did. Our situation was so dire with our band, like our last show with our other band, like our old band, we, we had to get our friend of ours that played bass to come in and learn a song for like three days on bass, and then he had to do guitar that night, and we was like, no, this ain't gonna work. And then it ended up, we lost members too. And even if you had found new members, I mean, that that it's number just, of members haven't been lost all at once, it could have been catastrophic. Members. And, and unless you know how hard it would yeah. be to build a band from scratch, it was like, the, with Oneida, I mean, the whole county is more, but Oneida itself's got like a population of like 6,000. That's yeah. uh, that's a big problem. So the fact you know, that finding members around here is yeah, it's different. The fact that, we have that this happened to them and and we were simultaneously, you know, uh, losing our longtime guitarist and, and great friend Mike, um, happened almost at the same time. That's a good question. Um, the type of people that. Uh, that I have the most respect for, I think, are the people that really that really dig in and do the work and fight tooth and nail to get people out to your shows and get them to you know, buy your merch. And, and so I've got the most respect for, for people, and especially bands that, that tour all over. And, and not just because it's fun, but because they they know that they need to. That's that's the people I have the most respect for, is people that are willing to fight for what they know they're supposed to be doing. Humility means a lot to me. I think people that respect what it is, you know. I hate, I hate people who are like, hey, we get a free bar tab. Like, <laughs> like that's cool. Like, we've got free bar tabs for. But it's yeah. like taking everything seriously yeah. enough, not so seriously that you're like, oh, oh. but you don't want to be stiff. You know, Obviously, we're yeah. we're we kind of joke around a lot, but we do we take we don't take ourselves that seriously, but we take our music very seriously. Yeah, just to kind of top off what you guys said. Um, Sorry if you mean specific people, those are drawn blanks for me. <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of sticking with, you know, in terms of music and uh, people. Um, open minded people and people yes. that are, you know, respectful. That's a really good that kind of yeah. talks now, people that yeah. People that aren't, people that are very open to anything, like, they will they will take something and they won't be like, oh, that's from this band, you know. Mm -hmm. Daily life, man. Daily life. Yeah, I mean, I don't wait. They, uh, I have, a, I have a good. I mean, you. Do, everybody gets inspiration. This is this. I don't mean this to like make the quote uh, disrespect the question, but uh, I like there's a quote from uh, Stephen King, and he said, like, and I try to go up and teach the same way, and I'm sure, and I know that Matt and them, like, when they want to write a song, I'll sit down and try to figure out a song. It might not end up being good, or it might, you know what I'm saying? But you, you sit down and do it. And he said, part of us wait for inspiration. The rest of us have, and he said, the ones that are doing it professionally get up and work, and they just get to work. Yeah, and that's when you do it. You don't wait for inspiration; it'll start to happen like, as you go. As you go, that's if what you I get mean, an idea from something. But you, that was, we don't just wait should, to be inspired. But yeah, you should yeah. throughout your life, you know, throughout your day, you should, you know, do things that's going to stimulate you to uh, be inspired. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and one of the I'm not, I'm not, what was we doing? I don't know, but I was so hungry. Oh, um, you break. Mm -hmm. I 
don't remember what I was talking about. Diversity. How bad, uh, how bad should I listen? Well, no, no, it's like, if you listen to different, like, genres of music and stuff, it really helps. But, like, me and Brent for forever, and our Ryan over here, we did the same thing. We would sit in front of a computer for like three and a half hours and just write. And it could be but then maybe sometimes it won't be so. All right, and, and here's something, uh, I'm going to go ahead and say this, because we actually have very different um, writing styles, and uh, we've not necessarily butted heads on it, but we've, we both have created in different fashions. Like um, with, with Mike, when he was in the band, he was very, very freestyle, and he, was, he would just come up there and he would sit and play for two hours solid, not play the same thing, until we found something that just caught my ear just the right way and, and, and invoked some kind of emotion. And, you know, it, it was an emotion that was connected to some kind of event that had happened to me recently. That's that's how I wrote. Um, I would find some kind of emotion attached to what he was playing and, and attach that emotion to something that was... Oh, still my cookie. <laughs> anyway, I would attach that emotion to some kind of something that had happened to me, personally. And, and kind of give that feeling um, from that event life through lyrics, you know, I would kind of, because that's what inspired me when I first started um, listening to music was, it was bands that, that made you feel like they had experienced the same kind of pain or the same kind of happiness or the same kind of anything that you had, so that made you feel like you weren't the only one experiencing it, and so, basically, <laughs> Sorry, there's a guy behind the camera and he's making yeah, a You can't see him, but he also gave us these cookies. So I can't see me either. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, inspirationally, uh, like these guys said, you know, they would they would sit down and work. And that's kind of what we were doing, but at the same time, you know, while we were freestyling, we would get some kind of connection to what we were playing. And and that's that's where our writing came out. You know, but again, it's it's doing the work. You know, not just sitting there. Question. No, not at all. I don't think you did. I think I think you but, did it justice by by branching off. You know, like you did. Surround yourself with musicians and music in general, just yeah. to uh, make friends in it. Yeah, yeah, that that's the best way I think. It's kind of like a support group, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> like, I mean, you know, you'll, you'll find out um, pretty whether you really on, want to do it or not, like, you know. We're doing this on the side, and, and the amount of work you have to put in on top of, like, your daily activities, you know, and all of us have kids, and all of us. Wives who hate our guts. <laughs> and it's, but it's doable, you know, I'm not, I'm not trying to make it seem like this insurmountable task, but just sure. take it, take it seriously, sure. and make sure <laughs> that, that you're prepared to accept the responsibility. Of, of what you have to do to accomplish. And when goals. we say take it seriously, like I know we're acting like a bunch of idiots, but like we don't take like we don't take ourselves that seriously. We take our yeah. music really seriously. Yeah, you we can't take music you really can't take yourself seriously in a, and be in a band bad. with four or five guys. Yeah, you have to be able to take it seriously yet. <laughs> not have fun. Not be so far up your own <laughs> soul. It yeah, it's not have fun. have fun with it. Me personally. In all seriousness, I I want to be doing this on a professional scale. There you go. In ten years, that's me. That's I mean, my only desire. And we're trying to we're trying to take moves to do that. Like that's we have a game plan. It's not like well I don't know. We might you be have to. You again. have to play. Like, ten, man, ten, I mean, ten year ten years is a long. We don't have a game plan for ten. Years. Yeah, we don't have a, a ten year game. I plan. I think we have a so. two year plan more yeah. so than a ten year. plan. I think that that's not completely yeah. in our control. You know, I mean. For yeah. the most part, it is, you know, but who knows? But as far as the one thing want, that's in your control you know. is, you know, I want to keep playing music. I want to oh, keep yeah. growing as, as a musician. And uh, I definitely don't want to stop. That's my 10 year plan. Yeah. But 10 years, for the next 10 years, I'm going to be playing music regardless. You do. So. But so, uh, we didn't, <laughs> you know, goof off too much in this interview. Thank we you. We hope you guys have enjoyed it. Um, it's it's meant to be enjoyable yeah. and entertaining. So. Yeah, I have one. I hope, we didn't, I hope we didn't ramble. I know we Which ramble. That's just what we do. Yeah. And I'm sorry that we ate cookies in front of you. Yeah, I'm sorry we rambled and yeah. And thank you to uh, Go Hot Shark for asking us to do this. Oh yeah, absolutely. Go Hot Shark. And and yeah. thank you uh, to go, them go for Hawk putting Shark. us all over their website and go, supporting go, us like they have. Go, um, <laughs> we got to meet them. I, I, I think I think they just came out with a theme song for you guys. Go ahead. <laughs> I think like Power Rangers would kill, kill me though. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead though. Go ahead. Go, 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 
we got we got to meet them, and Fun. they're incredibly nice. They're incredibly supportive of us. They they really enjoyed our performance, and, and we really enjoyed having them at our performance. So thank you guys so much for setting up the interview and, and everything you're doing for us. Yeah. Yeah, just being happy. I think that's my biggest thing. I, I want to be happy, but I want, I mean, that, to be happy, like, I i do not enjoy my day job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like, like, kind of just an like, extension of what like, we just said. Well, really. what I'm saying, though, is I, I don't really care if we tour full-time. I kind of don't know if I'd want to. I have a family, you know, and yeah. I want to do it part-time, but be making, in the time that we do tour, yeah, make I want to Making enough money to where you can live off of it and be happy, that's success. Yeah. I don't, we, we, don't, we, don't have, we don't have a desire for, for, I don't have a desire to be super wealthy, filthy rich, or, or, or famous. Yeah. It just, just really doesn't make it a job pill isn't, be happy. That pill isn't there for, but, uh, yeah. uh, for me, but you know, I think that's the way the rest of these guys are. We do it because we love to play Exactly. Music. If I can do that. We wouldn't be spending all of our money on this. If I, yeah. <laughs> if, I could, if I could do that every day, if I could get up every day knowing that my job was to do what I'm doing right now, and, and, and to be playing music and you know inspiring that's that's one goal that I set for myself I did want to I do want to inspire people um, not on some grand scale or anything but I just I was inspired by the people that I listen to and I, I want to perpetuate that I want people to be inspired to continue this you know because music can't die you know it, it's it's definitely ever moving so some of the bands I listen to now I mean Dart has been dead for I mean for years so yeah, so that's that's how I would define success. If I if I'm inspired right now for no reason. reason, what's the picture? What's that? What's that for? It's it's a baby. I know it's a baby. What's it, what's <laughs> baby? Why? A silly face. Is it Come baby? over here. Come over here. Since we're just killing time now. Come here. Thanks for watching our Go Hot Shark interview. We're cheers to Embers. I'm Brent. I'm Brandon. I'm Keith. I'm Frank. And these are our techs, Larry, also known as Ryan, and Nick. Also known as butthole. <laughs> no. And they've been behind the camera pretty much the whole time, so if we ever looked away from you, that's who we were looking at. So we get to put faces to the noise in the background. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, sorry, sorry for ramble too much. Thank you, Hot Shark. Thank you, guys. At least now we know. Hit that like button. <laughs>